Hello again, uh, Jim Coco. I'm here in uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, today we're going to do uh, talk like a mainframer. Uh, I selected you know 33 key terms that are often used within the, the, the mainframe community, whether that be in development or level one or externally with customers, and just kind of give you a little background or overview of the, uh, the jargon so your day-to-day -day dealings, you're familiar with the terminology uh, being thrown around. All right, you know, joking here, a little, little sleeping aids, but actually the helpful, uh, very helpful references, this red book, so certainly the first three chapters, uh, Mainframe 101, uh, ZOS Basics, uh, but that, it's a great reference. And like I mentioned last month in Mainframe 101, you know, I still reference a, a lot of these. There's no, no shame in that. Uh, nobody's an expert on everything, um, and, and it's very helpful. The, the other uh, reference that I find is uh, the, the pub here. It's on IBM's site. You can use the typer links directly to, you know, the 97-page glossary. Again, today I'm just going to kind of go over about 33 key terms, but there is a plethora of mainframe terminology and acronyms uh, that you'll probably see in your dealings with mainframe customers or IBM, uh, you know, use that as kind of a crib, crib sheet. I uh, really encourage you. I certainly do, uh, as well as my fellow architects. You know, use your, your network as well. So let's jump right into the terminology, uh, virtual machine invented. A lot of times you'll hear uh, advent is, is what they're saying here. Just an abnormal uh, end usually associated with a job or task. Uh, the nice thing is there's uh, return codes or what they call reason codes associated when a system uh, advents. Um, not a good condition to, to be in, uh, but it's not a crisis. You know, there's, there's an issue with the system, you know, an ad bended, you do get a, uh, a report that will give you a reason code to kind of help uh, the customer or level one determine what the issue was. but a lot of times the abnormal end, uh, the abbreviated uh, term, is just advent. Okay, like I said, you go spit out uh, dumps, you'll get message on the consoles, you know, a system log or what they call a sys log, um, job log uh, is just an information dump that, that helps you. A lot of times the window, when there is an advent, the window is 15 minutes before and five minutes after the advent you know, you want to get the, uh, the op log or the operator's console log just to kind of see what was going on. If there was some sympathy sickness 15 minutes before that led to the ad bend, could be uh, CPU utilization, um, there was an issue that caused an abnormal end to a, a task or a job going on. But this is usually the window the customer, you know, level one will recommend, you know, a full 15 minutes and then five after. But there is a, a log that occurs that is associated with, with every advent. All right, this one's kind of interesting. So ACK, um, ACK, you know, it's really just kind of shorthand, you know, confirms receipt of information or, you know, successful. Where you'll see this a lot, uh, with, if you're talking to a developer often, it's kind of slang or lingo. Instead of saying, you know, okay, or I, I understand or Roger, uh, in, a, in a same time or instant message, they'll just put ACK. Um, and you might be like, what the heck does that mean? It just means that that person acknowledges what you said or, you know, I, I uh, you know, roger that or confirmation. So you, you'll see that it's a kind of shorthand within the mainframe community uh, lingo that folks use. All right. So this, you know, what happens when a bug is discovered? Know, how we fix them. You've probably heard these terms before. Uh, APARs, PTFs. I think the biggest thing here, you know, you start with, with an APAR, which is your authorized program analysis uh, report, is what APAR stands for. Support helps us identify the bug, you know, whether it's level one or level two. You know, we cr create a temporary fix. Um, once that's validated and approved, a little counterintuitive, but then we release a, a PTF, uh, which actually is a program temporary fix. Uh, I say counterintuitive because you hear temporary, but if we release the PTF, that's actually the, the, the general usage. That is the fix. 
you'll hear that a lot, especially if you're in support or there's an issue. Um, you know, geez, I've got an APAR, but I'm waiting on the PTS. Okay, so you know, the customer might be talking to you about, geez, I'm running daily sales reports or uh, monthly uh, report, financial reports, or uh, you know, and we're seeing performance slowdown. Most of the mainframe shops understand that this clearly this should jump out of you that hey, this is a batch job. You know, that's really the beauty, as I touched on, of mainframe is it's high transaction, uh, but you can automate these batch jobs or and they're normally associated with like a weekly report, monthly report, could be financials, could be inventory reports. But it, the, the customer and, and, and the sysadmin or sysprog would automate this. And it, usually like at midnight, low usage times, that's when they're running these big batch jobs or batch reports. Somewhat of a timing issue, sometimes you'll hear that at a customer that, you know, the, the batch job scheduled tonight to run and uh, we'll see it tomorrow. Customers do this usually late at night, um, and usually banks or inventory, common reports that are run, they'll, they'll batch job it. You need to see here reasons to run the batch jobs. All right, good old BCP. This is the base control program. Uh, this is the core of ZOS. Um, actually, this is the, uh, Building 708 in the basement in Poughkeepsie. That's where the development, uh, we call it kind of the crown jewels. You, you see some of the components that are included in the base operating system for uh, ZOS. You, know, you have supervisor, GRS, certainly workload manager, SMF, um, IOCP. But BCP is the, the core of the guts of the ZOS. Uh, you, you'll hear Especially mainframers that have been around for a long time, they'll refer to ZOS sometimes as, you know, uh, BCP, especially when you're talking with IBMers. If any of you go to the technical disclosure meetings every six months over in uh, Poughkeepsie, oftentimes the, the change, changes in the kernel or the core of the ZOS operating system are done in uh, BCP. Okay, the good old kicks, um, some of the purest, uh, say, CICS. It's okay. It's interchangeable. Um, it, it is my take. Some it's more of a preference. Like, oh, don't say kicks. You'll offend someone, or it's spelled the acronym. It, it's okay, but it's essentially high transaction. You know, it's the middleware subsystem on the mainframe. You'll hear this a bunch, uh, given that the sweet spot for mainframe is transaction, and it's optimized through kits. Okay, so it's customer information control system. What it stands for there, but often referred to CICS or, or KICS. It's one of the subsystems that helps optimize the mainframe, handle the high transactions, um, you know, high volume you, you see there. Oftentimes, though, if there is a customer issue, it's associated in the subsystem with, with KICS. So central electronic complex, uh, often, you know, called, you know, the box, the way I associate this, this is kind of the BCP for hardware. So the base core program for the operating system, the KEC is the core of, of the mainframe. And you can see, you know, if you're familiar with hardware, you know, it makes sense. The CP, the memory, you know, the brains, the communication channels, the controllers, and then certainly the power uh, to feed the mainframe. Those are the, the core hardware components that make up the mainframe. So again, you might run into somebody that's been on the mainframe a long time, the lingo is, you know, you'll hear Keck um, or Box, they're, they're talking about the mainframe. Um, I'll also call it the, the CPC. This is really the, the true term that IBM utilizes with their financial accounting and, and operation and inventory. You know, the Keck, they're kind of interchangeable. Uh, Keck is kind of the, uh, I don't say the older, term for the mainframe, but it's, it's, it's the official term now is the, the CPC, um, but it's interchangeable with CAC. You know, CAC, box, CPC, uh, but again, it's the core mainframe hardware components. Okay, the system administrator or sysadmin, you'll hear them called, you know, it, often you'll hear system admin or system programmer, sysprog. You know, implying maintenance of security software. This requires an IPL of the system. So, 
you know, sometimes people, oh my gosh, an IPL, what does that mean? Initial program load, specifically the, the operating system. Now today, actually the last few years, a lot of these updates, uh, patches can be concurrently, they, they call it, it's dynamic here, but it's called a concurrent upgrade, IBM calls it. And you can dynamically, instead of having to reboot the system, which is essentially uh, an IPL, which a lot of customers, you know, don't want to do because that means, you know, that image is not available for, for some time. Um, you know, you're loading the OS into main memory. Nowadays, all that can be concurrent. Okay. Good old coupling facility, or sometimes referred to as the CF, uh, but this this is the facility that facilitates or enables parallel Sysflex. So um, this does all the the caching, listing, and blocking. So as the systems are, when you're talking across CACs or cross systems, obviously you're moving information. The, the key thing is that it's con consistent. Um, so a lot of times you'll lock that information, almost like if you're updating a SharePoint, you know, you're updating, someone else is updating, and, and many others, you know, what, what's the single source of truth? You know, you can kind of lock the spreadsheet, make the updates. The coupling facility does that to ensure the, the data is consistent, uh, accurate, and um, updated uh, in, in, a, in a timely fashion. And the coupling facility ensures all of that. Um, and it also is the central resource that folks access. So the data, you know, they can access the same, same data. But the, in your, your roles, the key thing with the, the CF for the coupling facility, it is associated with parallel sysplex. So if someone's talking about their plex, and, you know, you, you're probably going to hear the term CF for coupling facility. Um, and oftentimes, if there is an issue, there could be a firmware issue in the CF. If the which a lot of mainframers don't want to say, but you know, if, if there's a, a data integrity or a mismatch of data, a lot of times that points to the coupling facility. Something's going on, whether it was locking or the, the caching, the processing there, there. There's an issue usually in the CF if the data is mismatched. Okay, IMS, a little bit older, but again, another, um, another subsystem within the, uh, the, the mainframe, um, you know, it's transactional processing, often, you know, very associated, you know, governments uh, over uh, Europe use, utilizes I, IMS a lot, but again, the, you know, managing the, uh, the databases and, and terminal networks, often more legacy. Uh, with, with IMS. Okay, good old ESM you know, or the external security manager, as we talked about before, the, the three key or primary security products on the mainframe, uh, two Broadcom here, the ACS2 and Top Secret and IBM and RACAP, but those are the three core security products uh, utilized and, you know, the external security manager, uh, you know, implements uh, these, one of these three products. Sometimes you might have two of the products on there, but um, that, that's the conduit for these security programs to the mainframe. Okay. Uh, fiber channel or, or FICON, there's still some legacy. Uh, FCON was, was uh, this is the channels for storage. So mainframe communication channels or IO um, out to storage and, and back. Uh, proprietary, uh, you see there with the, uh, the fiber channel. Um, there is, this is really old ESCON or, or parallel kind of uh, 80s uh, fiber channel or FICON, uh, you know, early 90s coming out. But this, if, if you hear FICON, you know, that's, that's storage IO or it's a communication channel uh, that they're talking about here. And the other one is OSA. Uh, essentially, this is the uh, is a NIC card for the mainframe. So it's a network interface card, um, our NIC. Uh, 
All right. GDPS, you'll hear IBM proprietary, uh, big, big dollars here. Usually you'll see this with high, your high-end customers, very concerned about disaster recovery. Uh, your big banks utilize this. Not necessarily your average mainframe customer. This is really your top tier uh, global large banks, airlines. You know, it facilitates your um, high-end parallel sysplex across globally, as you know, geographically dispersed. But you know, it's a global parallel sysplex. Parallel sysplex. Uh, you could have sysplex within one mainframe, or if you're connecting or hooking up multiple mainframes, you know, you can create a, uh, a, a plex across. You know, parallel sysplex, uh, um, this is XCF or, or SES, which essentially stands for, you know, cross-system. It's cross-system interaction. Um, parallel sysplex is part of the ZOS operating system, and it allows you to, to just talk about, to talk across uh, many different texts or boxes, um, you know, hardware mainframe, and that connects it. And it's part of ZOS, and it's actually part of BCP are the core operating system of ZOS. Uh, but parallel sysplex, a lot of times people call it, uh, you know, a, a Plex, or you'll hear SES or XEF, which is really the true component name of parallel sysplex. So if you hear XEF, which is just cross system, or uh, SES, XES, uh, that's parallel sysplex. And, and oftentimes the, the lingo is Plex or SES. All right, good old HMC. Um, this you'll see more in the data centers. Um, I don't know how much interaction you, you'll, you'll have there. Uh, it's really kind of a desktop outside of the, uh, the mainframe, so the mainframe might be on the floor somewhere, and then you know, the, the HMC is, it might be in an office, an operational center, or um, uh, the, the, the NOSC that they'll, they'll have this. But this is the uh, desktop that talks to the mainframe, you see IBM utilizes it across, you know, all their systems, um, IPZ, you know, power, but it's the uh, interface to what it says is the hardware management console or the hardware interface with the mainframe. Um, I don't know how much interaction you'd really have. It's very, um, you know, we, we wouldn't necessarily be touching that. That is a... Uh, that's the gateway into the, the mainframe, if you will. Okay, IFPF, you hear this, level one's probably very familiar uh, with this, but you know, basic management, uh, but it's, it's facilities, uh, you know, into the, the, the system. You know, it's a, it's a terminal inter interface with the mainframe, uh, multiple panels behind here, kind of your traditional green screen that you hear often interaction or system menu for the mainframe, ISPF. Okay. JCL, or what we jokingly call here in uh, development, uh, just copy language. You know, it's job control statements. Uh, there's no shame. We say just copy language because it's not necessarily that intuitive as you read the code here. Uh, it's, it's sometimes painful. So if you find a good, uh, you know, JCL script, um, you know, you can see it's, it's utilized for commands on, you know, jobs within the operating system. Um, you know, your, your sys operators uh, you do these a lot. Nothing fancy, you know, like the example here, it could be a weekly uh, payroll program or, you know, a specific job that runs, um, you know, don't, don't reinvent the wheel. So oftentimes developers or the admin shops, uh, they'll use this uh, JCL, or you'll often jokingly hear it called just copy language, and that's used for just creating jobs, uh, reports uh, that, that customers will be using at their, their site. You know, LPAR, again, another differentiator or beauty of the mainframe, if you will, uh, that you can partition logically um, a single piece of hardware or the, the system itself into multiple 
uh, systems. You can cordon it off. Uh, now, you know, VMware, there's other competitors out there that, that do this, but, you know, the amazing, that's the beauty of the mainframe, really amazing. You know, we've been doing this for decades. Uh, but you'll hear, hear LPAR or image, um, you know, this LPAR is down, we're having a problem. But again, that's, that's the great thing of the mainframe is, you know, if you've got multiple images, you kind of have redundancy on a single box. So a customer can spin up another LPAR, so long as they have the memory processors available, but instead of just being single threaded on like your, your laptop where you look and okay, I got really one image, you could have, imagine if you have multiple images across on one piece of hardware, um, which is LPAR. Okay, now LIC, uh, it, it turned, you know, licensed internal code, no, no one really says that. Um, essentially, this is, this is firmware, uh, licensed internal code or, or, or firmware. Uh, you see this, uh, the microcode it's also called, um, you know, nobody really calls it microcode, it's, you know, essentially it's, it's firmware. And you'll see this a lot with the I.O. subsystems updates for FICON or OSA, uh, they send out what they call uh, MCLs or microcode, microcode releases, um, and it, it's essentially just the firmware or uh, software that's going to run directly onto the hardware is essentially what it is. Okay, MSUs, you know, service units, uh, you'll hear that a lot. Again, just kind of a a measurement or, you know, like miles per hour, or, you know, just a definition of consumption of, of work or amount of service there. MIPS is, is the other one that's very common, especially around, uh, you know, pricing, but essentially the, the processing capacity uh, is measured in, in MIPS. Um, I think uh, LACO in one of the town halls referred to it, I think it was at the uh, Miles or yeah, miles per per gallon MPG on this, but you know the raw speed of the uh, the processors. How many how many instructions can it uh, process in a second? You know, miles per hour. And again, system administrator. You know you don't really hear that. You hear sys admin installing the products. You know is, is really a key part of their role. Nobody really says portable archive exchange. Um, you'll just hear a PAX file. But that's, that's when they're installing the products. That is the, 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 the suite, the download, uh, the installation files for that product. That's the PAX file. Hey, can you send me the, the, the PAX file? Yeah, and we'll talk about SMPE. You'll, you'll hear that a lot too. But, uh, but essentially how you load the products. Customer might ask, hey, I'm waiting on the PAX file, or I need the PAX file, or I'm, I'm loading these products, and tomorrow I'm going to uh, install the PAX file. It's where you'll, you'll hear that. Okay, and then here's SMPE. Okay. Uh, and this is the mainframes, uh, you know, it's how they control changes uh, to the operating system within SMPE. Kind of read through there. But this is how on, on the mainframe, you know, it's IBM product, but how they install and, and make any software changes, you know, via SMPE. This is pretty neat. Pretty, pretty much the system management facilities. Um, you'll hear SMS records um, often, uh, they're, they're by numbers. Uh, such as, you know, an important one, especially for pre-sales or and the sales folks out there, but, you know, SMS type 89, uh, there's 70 records, 80s, but, you know, a key one I think that's good for this audience is, you know, the SMS type 89, which is the record for SCRT or IBM's reporting tool on usage. You know, that's what we're going to be using. You might have heard about the consumption-based pricing or the new pricing models. You know, the, the key SMF record that's going to be utilized that spits out what products are being used on that system, essentially. That record kind of gives a catalog of the products being utilized. Um, 
SMF type 89. You'll hear that a lot. Um, that feeds into the S SCRT, uh, the reporting tool, and that's what will be utilized with uh, pricing consumption. Um, so that's how they know how much uh, a product's being utilized or if, if the product is installed. They utilize the SMF or the management facility to determine that. Um, you know, it's SMF record 87 is GRS. Uh, the 70s provide RMF data, but the, the beauty of the you know SMF records is they give kind of give you record inventory. You know, it could be CPU, um, gives you an, an overview of what's on that mainframe. So a customer. Certainly, pricing might mention, hey, let, you know, pull SMF record 89, or maybe even level one might say, hey, can we, can we get these records to kind of inventory what's on your system? Um, that's what you would utilize is the SMF records. Okay. So, control blocks, you know, essentially the blocks of information or data structure, but within the address space. Um, Here's the usage example. Uh, you know, TCBs, control blocks, or you know, I, I'm missing a block uh, in my address space might mean that you know part of the information within the address didn't come across. You know, whether it was drop packets or um, something happened. But you know, task control block, you'll hear it interchangeable out there. TCB or uh, just control block. And that's just a, a bit of information within the, the address space that you'll see. Uh, these are the specialty processors that we talked through. Um, you know, IFLs specifically, uh, um, and then zips and zaps. Now, zaps, they, they all call it, falls under zips now, but they're still, it's kind of a legacy term. It was used uh, specifically for, for Java programming. Again, don't forget that the specialty processors, just normal CPUs, IBM just kind of cordons them off, um, and they uh, run specific workloads, and there's also pricing deals on the workload, you know, whether it's Java or Linux running on them, they might, uh, they're optimized to just run that code. So that increases uh, performance. So instead of the CPU trying to run Linux workloads, Java workloads, you know, different types, it kind of farms it out so they can focus on and optimize on, on one specific or specialty uh, to process. Uh, but you know, today there's just zips. Um, there's not zips and zaps. Zaps are part of uh, zip. But you'll hear a lot of customers still. It's very common in the mainframe ecosystem to hear zaps still. Um, okay. There we go. Perfect.